Are you new to survival? How about some basics for preparedness for survival in any type of emergency situation? If you are brand new to the idea of being prepared or putting together a survival pack for you and your family, you may be feeling a little um, anxious would be a good word. It's a natural way you feel, really, I mean, um, because it's it's terrifying to take a hard look in the mirror and realize just probably how unprepared you are for anything that might come your way and what you would do for your family. You know, and if you're not careful, um, you know, I mean, this way of feeling and everything else, the anxiety and, and all that, it can develop into, you know, you would end up with, uh, you know, stress, sleepless nights, um, you know, since that you're running out of time, like the end of the world is at 6.59 and it's 6.49 get what I'm saying um, but if you harness the feelings I guess you could say they could be a, a good thing it'll motivate you and get you uh, moving on trying to get your preparedness all together but being ready to take action is really different from taking action a lot of people when something happens says well I'm not gonna go through that again and you know we're, we're gonna be ready but they never do it until the next time rolls around and they realize they dropped the ball. One of the reasons I started my channel was to make sure that people are aware. Make sure people are aware of things that they need to have on hand. Make sure that people are aware of a lot of the supplies you need, ways to get your supplies. A lot of my stuff is for, you know, the, the beginners, you know. Try to do it within a budget. Try to keep the money down to a you know a minimum, but still be planning ahead for what may be coming. You know there are a lot of channels out there, and you know they have all this stuff on there, and it's all the high tech stuff and everything else. And if people are on a budget, especially nowadays with so many people out of work, it's not going to work. And it kind of I would think turns people off because they think it's so expensive to be a prepper and be prepared when in traditionally it's not it's you have to be frugal with your money you have to do your research and shop around and find the things that you need that can help you get through any type of a situation you know you hit the um, sometimes you'll hit these major roadblocks. You won't be able to do something you wanted to do or follow through with a plan that you wanted to do or maybe you have to execute it a different way. Um, you know, one thing about the information society out here, there are millions if not billions of websites, podcasts, YouTube channels, all your social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, all these different places, and they all are giving you information and everything else. And you start asking a lot of different questions, especially for the beginners. Now, this is really for the beginners, so pay attention. All right? Questions that you're going to have. All right? Where should you begin? What should you do first? These are all questions that I had. Should I take a course? You know, should I spend that kind of money? What communities maybe should I join? Do you have a local community in your area that uh, does disaster preparedness or um, those type of things? You know, like the Red Cross or something like that. Maybe you may want to join something like that so you get information and you get the understanding of how important it is to be prepared for 
whatever it is that may come your way. You know, who should you follow? There's millions of YouTubers out there. I'm a small little channel, but I try to get the great, perfect information for all of you out there. And I try to do a really good job of making sure that you're well informed, you know how to do things, and you know what to do in a time of crisis. Whose advice is trustworthy? You know, there's, there's so many outlets out there. Um, you don't know who to believe. You know, if you watch a lot of, of YouTube channels, the good ones, you know, we all talk the same way. We all say the same things. Those are the ones you want to watch. You get some of these radicals out there and you may want to stay away from those type of people or sites or whatever. Should you stockpile, you know, food first, water first, supplies, you know, what you should stockpile, you know, um, another thing is bugging out compared to bugging in or hunkering down and staying inside your home, which I've done videos on just about all this kind of stuff. Uh, what gear is say necessary and what is optional? What do you need and what would be a luxury? How much does it cost? Are there cheaper um, alternatives to these products? And the last question you'll probably be asking yourself is, can I afford to do this? But the real question should be, can you afford not to do this? Now I'm going to read off some statistics here. Um, I do have these written down because I wanted to make sure that I did get this information correct. And some of this is probably going to blow your people's mind. All right. This is from March 22nd, 2013. Okay. 60% of Americans say preparation for natural or mad main disasters or a pandemic is very important to them, but only a staggering 17%, 17% claim to be prepared for an emergency situation. That was in 20. 13 in March. Now we move ahead, all right, to 2020. 42% of Americans don't have an evacuation plan in the event of a pandemic, severe weather, or a natural disaster. And only 19% have a family meetup plan. So if your family is scattered throughout and you want to meet someplace in the middle, only 19% of Americans have a such said plan. Today we have highly advanced warning systems. You know when a hurricane's coming. You know when a blizzard's coming. Um, they're getting really even better at even forecasting tornadoes compared to, say, 40 years ago when, when the siren went off. If you weren't hitting the floor, you were a goner. So... We're really good at forecasting. They're putting all these satellites up in the air and everything else. But it's shocking. Stats, 53% of the U.S. households don't even have a three-day emergency, non-perishable food supply. 53%. That's of right now, this year. 53% is barely only half of the American population. If that number doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. Because that means, it might mean that a lot of people that are watching this video, you're not prepared. And you want to get prepared. In a time of crisis, nearly half the population would begin to starve before the end of the first week. Now, let's roll out some stats here. 44% of Americans don't even have a first aid kit. 48% of lack emergency supplies. 
53% do not have a minimal three-day supply of non-perishable food or water at their home. 55% believe local authorities will come to their rescue in a disaster situation. We've all seen how that played out. Don't bargain on it. 42% do not know the phone numbers of all their immediate families. 21% don't know if their workplace has an emergency preparedness plan. 37% don't have a list of all the medications that they are taking. And 52% they don't have copies of all their important documents. That's pretty bad people. We can do better. We can do better. We the people can do better. We don't need the government to hold our hand. We the people can make this be a lot better percentages. It's going to take time, might take money, might take some effort on your part, but you need to be prepared because things are not getting any better and they're only getting worse. The storms are getting worse. The economy is getting worse. All the protesting and everything else is getting worse. We're in an election year. It's just going to hell in a handbasket. <clears throat> a couple more things I just want to cover real quick. You know, um, If you're going to stockpile your foods and stuff, one of the main things that you have to remember is, is you have to make sure that you rotate your stock. If it's not something that's, um, say, on the lines of your freeze dried foods, which, you know, from like Valley Food, uh, Legacy Food, uh, Wise, uh, those type of companies where you know they're going to last 20 to 30 years. Um, so you want to make sure that you're rotating your stock. That is a big thing, you know. Um, you want to make sure that when you are preparing, you want to make sure that you have a plan. Plans are very, very important. A plan is something that can save your life, your family's life. You know, having the plan written out. I've talked about it in my videos several times, you know, use a journal, a notebook, whatever it is, however you want to write it down, but have a plan in place and make sure that other people in your family know what the plan is. That is very important. All right. Now, here's some steps that you can take right now and start prepping and be prepared. The first one is you want to be informed all right so you got to make sure that you have some way of being informed of what is going on emergency radio maybe you have apps on your phone on your computer laptop whatever it is that you have make sure that you have those apps and that you know how to use those apps in case they give you information so you can get in there and you can quickly navigate through it and try to find out what it is that you're looking for you know, make a plan. Like I was just talking about, you want to make sure that you have a plan in place. Make a plan. You got to start building a kit. You know, you got to make sure you have a first aid kit. You want to make sure you have a go bag. You know, the whole nine yards, you want to have a kit. All right. You got to establish communication. You want to make sure that you have some way to communicate with other people, however it may be. You know, you can use radios, shortwave radios, um, ham radios, if you have a ham radio license, uh, your cell phones, satellite phones, all that kind of stuff. In an emergency situation, communication is key. All right. You must plan for your evacuation and your evacuation routes. That is a huge, huge thing. I've done several videos on you know, a lot of these things, you know, being prepared, evacuation, what to do, how to do it, and everything else. And you people really have to have a plan. 
and you want to have more than one evacuation route, you want three. That's what I say. All right, it's always better to have more than one. You want to make sure that you're prepared with your pets and your your if you can't take your pets with you, you must you have to make sure that you have some place that the pets can go. You know, so you have to make sure you have that set up in case that something happens. It's already set in stone and you can either take them to a shelter, drop them off or wherever the place may be, you know, because not always are you able to take your pets. And the last thing is get involved. Get involved with other people that are doing the same thing. Whether you join a YouTube channel so you can communicate with them in there, the, the communication of the comments going into your YouTube channel is phenomenal. I push, you know, all the, the the comments all the time. People comment on my videos, you know, so we all can learn something from whatever situation because everybody has gone through different things. Everybody has been through different situations and everybody has a different experience. And when they share that knowledge, the knowledge is what helps out the rest of the community. It's not just me. It's you people also. So make sure that you're always sharing the knowledge and get involved. Maybe you want to get involved in something that's, you know, around your area or people that you know that are preppers, you know, but get involved. So this video is running a little long. So I'm going to start doing some different videos on some of the different topics that I just talked about in this um, video here to try to maybe give you a little refresher course on some things. If anybody out there has got any questions or anything, please free feel to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer your questions. And if I can't, I'll try to get the answers for you or at least send you in the right direction so that you can get the information that you so do desire and need. So remember people, it's all about we the people. Don't rely on the government because they always drop the ball. So until next time, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and I'll catch you on the flip side.